Good morning, everybody. Thanks for joining us at our uh, the Aquarium's Online Academy. This morning, our topic today is right here behind me. Now, you may uh, know what this animal is. If you do, go ahead and call it out or tell somebody that's near you. Yes, absolutely. These are penguins. Now, today we're going to discuss penguins for just uh, about 30 minutes or so. And if you have questions about penguins that you have really wanted answered, or you just thought of a really cool question you want to ask, go ahead and text us at the number right there. It's 562-286-1838. And uh, kiddos, make sure that you get your grown-ups permission because data rates may apply. Now, my name is Stacy, and I'm coming to you from the Aquarium of the Pacific to discuss and uh, observe some penguins. <laughs> so I want you to just take a moment. And um, if there's somebody in the room with you, talk to them about it. If you have a notebook, write down some of the observations that you might be making. But I want you to take a look at these animals. And I want you to think about what do you notice? What is something that tells you that this is a penguin and not a lizard? or a whale, or a bear. How do you know that this is a penguin? So go ahead and take a moment. Ooh, here's a, a little bit closer. How do we know that these are penguins? What do you see? Now, if you want to share some of your thoughts, you can text that to us too. Again, the number is 562-286-1838. And we would love to have your answers and uh, we'll shout them out as well. All right, so I hope that you've had a moment to really make some observations, really look at these animals to try to figure out how do we know they are penguins? Well, first thing that I notice is their colors. What are the colors that you see? Now, this penguin is a little bit different than the ones that we have here at the Aquarium of the Pacific, but it is very classic in the two main colors that are on this animal, and that is the black and the white. All right, so yes, penguins are black and white, almost all of them are. And some penguins have a, a little special coloring, like this king, king penguin here has a little bit of orange and a little bit of yellow, but it again has that classic black and white kind of tuxedo look to it, right? Now, the color of a penguin is actually really, really important to a penguin. How? Think about that for a moment. How can color be important for animals. Just think of any animal that you um, think, like I always think about bears. I know that this is not a, a story or a, a show about bears here, but I always think about bears and I really love brown bears. They live in the forest with brown trees, right? The trunks of trees are brown. That brown matches the trees. But wait a bit, these penguins are black and white. That's two different colors. Well, what's really cool is that's actually camouflage. That actually helps them match their surroundings just like a brown bear, except penguins live in the ocean. And those penguins that live in the ocean, when they float, they float on their bellies. So their belly is in the water and their back is kind of toward the top, right? Well, if they're swimming in the water and there's a predator underneath looking up, it's going to see a white belly and the lighter surface of the ocean because the sun is up there and it's making the top of the ocean very shiny, kind of like a penguin belly. And if you have a predator on the back above it when it's swimming around, the dark back of a penguin matches the bottom of the ocean, the darker bottom of the ocean. So even though it's kind of funny for them to have camouflage or to be able to blend in being black and white, which are, um, two opposite colors, right? They can absolutely blend in. This is called counter shading. And if you look at a lot of ocean animals, especially the ones that swim, you'll notice that they have counter shading too, a darker top and a lighter belly. All right, so that's one of the very first things that I notice about penguins. What is something else that you noticed about them? 
Oh, this one right here is really cute. <laughs> All right. Now with that one, if you got to see that one, I noticed how they walk. All right, everybody. I want you to stand up for a moment. And I want you to show the other people in the room how a penguin walks. Do they hop around? No, they don't hop around. Do they fly? Penguins actually can't fly. How do penguins walk? Well, they kind of go back and forth like this, right? So do you think they can walk fast? I don't know. Let's try it. Can we walk fast? Oh, that's kind of hard, right? <laughs> so this is what penguins look like when they walk. They put their wings out and that gives them some balance, which is really important. And if you look at what their legs, they kind of look a little bit small because their bodies are pretty low, right? And so the part of their leg that can move is pretty little. So they have to take little steps. Can you do that too? <laughs> All right, excellent. So I kind of love the way that penguins walk. They're pretty, pretty silly. But what about when they swim? How do penguins swim? I want you to think for just a moment. We see what they look like. We know that they have feet. We know that they have wings, but they can't fly. This is what their wings look like. How would a penguin swim? Take a moment and think about that. Now, we're trying to see if one of our penguins is swimming right now. My friend Amanda is actually on the computer, um, and hopefully she will be able to um, see if any of our penguins are in the water. But, oh, look at that. Woohoo! that one's going fast. How are they swimming? What did you see? Oh my goodness, did you see them flapping in the water? It's pretty cool when they dive inside the water, their wings flap and it almost looks like they're flying under the water. So they use their wings just like that to swim in the water. It's pretty amazing. Now, the other thing that's kind of funny, it was a little bit of a trick question that I was asking you because they have two different ways to swim. When they're underwater, they do that. We saw that, right? They flap their wings and that pushes them through the water and they can go quite fast under the water. But when they're floating on the top of the water, their wings are out of the water, but their feet are in. So they actually use their feet and they paddle like this. Oh, <laughs> that's a little bit of nesting material. And they paddle like this, kind of like a duck. If you've ever seen a duck swimming, floating on the top of the water, that's kind of like what penguins do too when they're floating on the top of the water swimming. Now, thank you all so much for your questions. We've actually had a few questions pop in. How old are the penguins? That's a really good question. The penguins that we have here at the Aquarium of the Pacific are a pretty good range. Um, I believe uh, our oldest ones are in their 20s, maybe young 20s. And then um, they can get up to maybe about 25 years or so. And then um, our youngest ones, I believe, are a year old, maybe two, maybe two years old. So, um, oh my goodness, yes, they're, they're just about two now because time has passed very quickly. <laughs> so that's how old our penguins are here at the aquarium. And if you were wondering what kinds of penguins we have, um, we have Magellanic penguins. Magellanic penguins are penguins that live in South America. All right. So uh, do penguins eat fish? That's a great question. I wonder if we can bring up maybe a picture of a penguins uh, a, that's close enough where we could see their beak. Because um, that might help us. I'm not sure how many photos we have. Amanda's looking for it right now. Oh, there we go. So here is um, actually a penguin that we have here, a Magellanic penguin. This isn't one of our penguins, but the same type. Take a look at this beak. It's super interesting. So that beak is definitely designed to eat fish. Oh, it looks like, oh, we actually have a penguin skull, so a model of what the penguin's uh, bones in their head and their beak would look like. And of course, this is a Magellanic penguin. So I'm going to go over to my document camera to bring that up and we can take a look at that beak and see if it would be good for catching and eating fish. So let's check this out. 
Oh, this actually um, is a great question because Ava is also wondering what things penguins eat. And uh, Luke wants to know what do they eat for treats? Um, and then we have Nevia, uh, what do they eat in the wild and at the aquarium? My goodness, you are all on the same page. I love it. All right, so let's take a quick look at this penguin skull. All right, let's uh, kind of bring that down a little. Does that help? I hope that that makes it a little bit easier to see. So here's a penguin skull. And again, this is a Magellanic penguin. You can kind of see it near my, my fingers here. So it's not really big. This is my hand, okay? And I don't have giant hands, but it sure looks like it next to this penguin skull. Okay, so if you're looking at the skull and you're trying to figure out what's what, this is where the eye would be, right here, okay? This is their beak. And of course, right in here would be the little brain. <laughs> That's kind of where that, the little circle is right there. Okay, so here's the penguin beak. Now remember, penguins live in the ocean, so they'll have to find some food that they would um, find in the ocean, right? Well, fish is a really, really great thing for penguins to eat. Squid too, actually. Um, and did you know penguins will even eat, Magellanic penguins at least, will even eat some crustaceans, maybe like shrimp? So it's pretty cool. Um, now this beak, it's really hard to see on the model, but it even, um, it's not totally smooth. It's actually a little bit jagged. And that little bit of jaggedness is great when you're trying to catch something that's slippery, like a fish or a squid. Now, if you were going to be eating and you were a penguin with a beak, do you think they're going to eat a really big fish? Or do you think they might eat something maybe a little bit smaller that they could just swallow whole? Hmm, take a look at that beak. Well, if you guess something a little smaller, I agree with you. They do like to eat things that are a little bit smaller because their beak is designed for catching food. It's not very good for chewing or taking bites. So they do tend to swallow their food whole. Um, now here at the Aquarium of the Pacific, we like to give them a couple of different small fish. Um, and I think they do get squid on occasion as well, but I believe that they really like the fish more than anything. Oh, that's kind of fun. I wonder what they're doing. <laughs> now, um, those are the kinds of treats that we do give our penguins and they love it. Now, some of our penguins are pretty funny because um, they are very particular. Some of them like uh, getting their fish handed to them in very specific ways. And so the people who care for our penguins get to know each of them and get to know their personalities so that way they can feed them just the way that the penguin likes to be fed. So yes, they're quite spoiled. And yes, they're also hand fed. And that's a really great way for us to know um, how much each penguin is eating. And we actually keep a record of that. So we know that um, they're eating enough food and that they're staying nice and healthy. And if we see something that's a little bit off, then we can take them to the veterinarian. So that's a really nice thing about the way that we care for our penguins. Now, uh, we have a question from Drew. What types of predators do penguins have? Oh, Drew, that is a really good um, question. You know, I, I am not positive, but I bet you they're going to be larger animals. So leopard seals in Antarctica for the, the handful of penguins that live in Antarctica. Leopard seals are very big seals. And I believe we don't have any pictures of leopard seals, um, but maybe with a grown-up's help, you can um, search it and find a picture on, um, on a website for a leopard seal. They're pretty big, um, and they're about like the size of a small car. So or the, the length of a small car. They're pretty slim, um, but yeah, so they're, they're pretty big seals. So what's going to be eating them are the things that are also big enough to be able to catch them. Like again, the leopard seal. Um, we have another question. King here in Long Beach. Hi, King. Um, how thick is penguin fur? That's a great question. Let's go take a look at what is covering a penguin. So we're gonna go back to the document camera. All right, I am going to remove the, um, the skull of my penguin. 
skull model and let's take a look at these. Now I'm actually going to see if I can take a few of these out. I don't typically do this, but it might be a little bit easier for the camera here. Okay, take a look at these. What do they look like to you? All right, these are feathers. So this is a feather from a penguin. Now they are very little, because as you can see, this is my thumbnail. So it's just a tiny bit bigger than my thumbnail. Now, did you know that penguins are covered in feathers? Because my friends, penguins are birds. If you think about penguins, they don't really look like they have feathers. They look smooth and sleek like fur, right? But they have wings, they have a beak, and you may not have known this, um, but they lay eggs too. So penguins, oh, over here. <laughs> penguins are actually birds. They're just birds who can't fly. And just like other birds, they have feathers. Okay, so, um, so we'll take a look at the feathers in just a little bit, but um, my friend Amanda brought up a really cool picture here. So this is um, actually a Magellanic penguin. And as you can see, there's an egg. So now we know for sure that this is, um, this is definitely not a mammal because mammals, furry mammals like dogs, cats, people, um, bears, <laughs> they don't lay eggs, right? They have live birth. So this is a bird and um, they lay eggs. And what's really, really cool is if you look up at this, um, this picture right up here, we were able to take an egg um, and it's called candling. And what that means is you put a light really close to the egg and you can actually see through the shell and that shadow that you see right there that's a baby penguin inside the egg so very very cool and here's this kind of gives you an idea of how big it is because it's kind of compared to a hand so if you cupped your hand like this the egg would be able to fit right inside there so oh and here's a baby penguin. So this one here hatched out. And yes, they have to hatch just like um, birds. All birds, right, have to hatch out of their eggs. And, um, and this penguin right here, I think, is actually one of our baby penguins. They don't really look like they're grown-ups, right? Take a look at this. Does this look like the same Magellanic penguin? Let's, let's compare. I have a plushie here. Do they look the same? Obviously, this one doesn't look totally real, <laughs> but it doesn't have the same colors. So the baby penguins, baby Magellanic penguins are kind of more gray um, and that gray and, and like kind of fluffier. They're also not good for going in the water. If they went into the water like this, they would actually get very, very cold because the water that they live in is on the cooler side. Now, Magellanic penguins, you actually don't find them in the snow. I know a lot of people think about penguins living in snow, but um, they live on rocky beaches, just like what you see right here. And these rocky beaches are a whole lot like Southern California. So if you live in Southern California or you've ever visited, you kind of know what it's like here. It's a little bit warm, um, but the water is nice and cool. And that's kind of exactly where they live, except further south, um, closer to the South Pole than we are for sure. So um, they have to have really, really good feathers. And those really good feathers are going to keep them warm when they go into that cool water. Now that baby penguin's feathers are not the same as the grown-up's feathers. And so it won't keep them warm. So they actually have to stay on land in nests, which is kind of cool. Now, if you've wondered where penguins are from, here's a really cool map to show us where you find penguins around the world. And what do you notice? The blue is the penguins. Do you notice any in the United States? Not really. You don't find them here unless they're at a zoo or an aquarium like us. And the most of the blue is actually all the way down here at the bottom in Antarctica. Okay, so that's like South Pole territory. Um, penguins do not live in the North Pole area like polar bears do. So penguins are in the South. Now, uh, these ones right here that you see, these are the ones that you're going to be, uh, the Magellanic penguins that you're going to find at the Aquarium of the Pacific. So they are in South America, all right? 
So very cool. Let's go back to those feathers because we kind of took a, a little bit of a turn away from feathers there. But take a look at these feathers. They are so, so, so fluffy. And that's one of the reasons why it's so good for keeping them warm. Okay, just like people sometimes um, have like down jackets, which are feathers. Um, so these penguin feathers are perfect for staying warm. And what's really amazing about penguin feathers is that when they grow, they grow together and they're really, really, really close. So close that all the little feather floofs kind of lock together. And if you have enough feather floof that locks together, the water stays out. So even when penguins are swimming in the water and the outside of their feathers is totally wet, their skin is dry. That is how you stay warm. Now, it's really kind of funny um, because if you were ever to see a penguin swimming in the water and not going so fast that you can actually see them a little bit easier, they actually have some bubbles that comes out of them. Um, and that's because that air is closer to their skin. And um, as they're in the water, the, the water is kind of pushing some of the air out. And so it, it almost looks like they're bubbling from their, uh, from their feathers. And then when they come up to the surface, um, then the air gets back in. And of course they breathe because just like other birds, they have to breathe air. All right, great. Now we have a few more uh, questions here. Um, let's see, Milo, how can they hold their breath? Great question. They hold their breath a whole lot like us. Okay, everybody, hold your breath. <gasps> okay, I can't hold my breath for very long. <laughs> Penguins can hold their breath a little bit longer. Um, it's been known for them to hold their breath about like three minutes or so. Um, but typically, they only hold their breath for about a minute. Really, one of the reasons that they want to hold their breath and swim is to, <laughs> there's that, that leaf again, <laughs> um, is to, uh, to find food, right? And so they just need to be able to be underwater long enough to catch their food, and then they come back up to the surface again to breathe. So that's how they hold their breath. And um, Darian asked, how long can they swim underwater? There you go, just about three minutes or so. So <clears throat> most of the time, they're going to be closer to the surface of the water. They can, however, dive pretty deep. Magellanic penguins can dive um, up to 330 feet deep. That's very deep, um, but it doesn't happen too often. Most of the time, they stay much closer to the surface. Um, let's see, another question here. Oh, how fast can they swim? That's a good question. It kind of goes right along with it. Um, they usually swim somewhere between, oh, that one's cleaning itself. <laughs> um, they usually swim somewhere between four to seven miles an hour. So not super fast, but check that out. Sure looks fast, right? Um, Gen 2s, which are another kind of penguin, can swim even faster. They can swim 22 miles an hour. That's really fast. Gen 2s. <laughs> now, can they walk fast? We did that, right? They're not the fastest walkers, <laughs> but they're definitely designed for swimming because they're ocean animals. Great questions, everyone. Oliver asks, how long does it take to hatch an egg? Ooh, that's a good question, Oliver. Um, let's see. Let's take a look at those eggs again. How long does it take to hatch an egg? Well, when they lay their eggs, it's usually in the spring, but um, it's kind of funny. Being in the southern hemisphere, so the, the so uh, southern part of the whole earth, it means their seasons are different from the northern hemisphere. Like here in, um, in Long Beach, it's spring, but where the Magellanic penguins are in the ocean, it's fall. So it's the opposite. Um, so the, the penguins are going to be laying their eggs a little bit later. So um, in our fall, they're going to be laying their eggs. And I believe it just takes a matter of a few months, I think. Um, that's a real good question though. Okay, it looks like um, we, that might be something that we're gonna look up just to be sure um, 
we know how long it takes to hatch an egg. But uh, so I think one of my coworkers here, one of my colleagues is going to be looking uh, that up for us. And Oliver, I hope to have that answer for you uh, before we finish up our program here. Uh, let's see, Abigail and Joshua, do penguins fight? Well, yeah. <laughs> Just like most animals, including people, um, that does happen. But most of the time, it's them kind of just calling at each other. Now, the Magellanic penguins, the ones that we have here at the aquarium, are pretty funny when they call at each other because they sound like donkeys. Did you know that a penguin could sound like a donkey? It's pretty silly. <laughs> so um, they actually do something called braying, which is exactly what donkeys do. Um, and I'm not sure if we have, um, I don't think we have that sound for you, but I bet you that's another thing that you could, um, with, with help from your grownups, you can look that up too and see if you can hear the call of a Magellanic penguin. It's different than you would have expected. It doesn't sound like a bird call at all. And another question from Pearl, how much fish does a penguin eat daily? And do penguins sleep? Um, the fish that the penguins eat daily, that's another good question. I'm actually not really sure, but we'll see if we can figure out that for you as well. Um, and then do penguins sleep? Absolutely. So um, penguins definitely need to get some sleep. And here at the aquarium, they will actually typically come out of the water and hang out on our beach. And then they just kind of hang out together and they fall asleep and then they'll wake up again. So we definitely do see them sleeping. Occasionally they'll even take a nap during the day, um, but that, that does happen. All right, and oh, Oliver, we have, uh, we have an answer for you. So how long does it take to hatch an egg? It takes about a month, maybe two months or so for our penguins. But for emperor penguins, it takes six months. So um, it does take a little bit longer for emperor penguins, but emperor penguins are bigger. Oh, two months. I'm so sorry. Yes. So about a month or so for a month or two for, for emperor penguins. Okay. Uh, so here we go. Sorry about that. I misread my, uh, my notes there. So these, uh, these are the emperor penguins. And emperor penguins are a little bit different than the penguins that we have here at the aquarium. Take a look at this picture. What do you see that is different than those penguins um, that we were talking about that were on a, on a beach? So something you may have noticed is these emperor penguins are on snow. And that's true. Emperor penguins are one of two penguins that lives on Antarctica. So not all penguins live on, uh, on Antarctica. But, um, but emperor penguins do, and that means they, are, they really rely on ice and snow. That is what they have adaptations for. Now, if you live on ice and snow, it's really tough to find a nest, right? So instead of building a nest of sticks and leaves like the penguins that we have here at the aquarium, they use their feet as a nest. So they actually hold the eggs on their feet. And that's a long time, a month or two, to hold an egg on your feet. And you get hungry, right? So one of the things that emperor penguins have to do is the parents work together. Uh, mama penguin and daddy penguin have to hold on to an egg on their feet. And one of them will go and find food. And then when that one has eaten some food, it comes back um, over to the other penguin, and then they have to switch the egg. Now, the egg cannot touch the ground, so they have to very carefully move the eggs from one set of feet to the other set of feet. Do they have hands? No, they don't. So they can't even just pick it up with hands and put it on the other penguin. In fact, they just have to do it with their feet. Now, if you have somebody with you, here's a fun game that you can try. Try getting like a ball or a balloon or something like that and put it on your feet. And then I want you to see if you can try to put that ball or balloon on somebody else's feet. You can work together as a team without dropping it on the floor. That's kind of tough. So see if you can be an expert penguin, just like those emperor penguins, and move the egg from the feet to the other 
set of feet. Okay, so that's a game that you can play a little bit later today if that's something you want to try. Oh, excellent. So it looks like we have on our website um, the sound of a Magellanic penguin. And my friend Amanda is going to show you how to find it. Now, first you have to go to our website. It's aquariumofpacific.org. And then in the little search bar right here, we have penguin noises. When you search that, take a look here. Magellanic penguin. And it looks like you can play what they sound like. Now, the computer that Amanda is using right now to search on, the, um, on our website is not hooked up to our sound. So unfortunately, we can't show it or, or play it over the, um, the program here right now. But that is something that you can look at. So again, go to our website, aquariumofpacific.org, search penguin noise, and then it'll pop right up. Okay, so that's one way that you can hear the very interesting call of the Magellanic Penguin. All right, we have uh, just a couple more questions and then we'll have to wrap it up. But we have Thomas in New York. Hi, Thomas. Um, why do penguins live in the cold? That's a really good question. You know what you can find a lot of where it's cold, especially where the water is cold? Food. So a lot of animals like to live close to the things that they can eat, right? And penguins like to eat small fish. Small fish, oh, hi, little one. <laughs> small fish, um, many small fish really like cold, cold waters. And that's one of the reasons why they live in the cold. The other thing is that's where they live and that's what they're adapted for. So their, their bodies and their behaviors are perfect for where they're living. So yes, that's one of the reasons why they live there. But you know, not all penguins live where it's really, really cold, right? This penguin here, obviously we see the snow and the ice. But remember the Magellanic penguin lives where it's, the weather is uh, a little bit warm. They live here on the beach. So um, out here, it's actually a little bit warm, but in the water over here in the ocean, it's where it's cool. So, oh, there's a close up of one of ours. Hey buddy. Um, Ethan in Oklahoma City. Hi, Ethan. What is a penguin's beak made of? Oh, that's a good question. Um, I have a feeling it's keratin, kind of like, kind of like our fingernails. Okay, so, um, so yeah, that's a really good question, and I'm getting uh, head nods around me. So <laughs> it looks like, yes, keratin. My goodness, you have some really great questions out there, everyone. Um, Hendrix wants to know, do penguins have tails? <gasps> Let's look. Oh, my gosh, do you see it? Right there. They do. Not a huge tail. <laughs> An itty-bitty tail. But absolutely, they have, oh, there it goes. Ah, that one shook its tail. <laughs> Hendrix. Perfect timing. Thanks for that question. And then why do they slide on land? Oh, why do they slide? Well, think about how penguins walk, right? Oh, these ones are cleaning themselves. Nice job, buds. That's very important. Think about how penguins walk, right? Penguins have to walk and it's pretty slow and it takes a lot of effort. And if you did this and you had to walk far, it may tire you out. And it uses a lot of energy. So all that food that they're eating, that means they're going to have to eat more food. So sliding actually makes it easier for them to move because they lay on their belly and they slide. So it's kind of like tobogganing. And if you look back here, we actually have a few that are laying there. That's also a good way to rest too, right? <laughs> okay, excellent questions, everyone. Now we do have to wrap up for this morning, but if you have any more questions, you're welcome to email us. Our email address is live, L-I-V-E, at L-B, like Long Beach, A-O-P, Aquarium of Pacific, dot org. So that's live at L-B-A-O-P dot org. If you email us at that address, then we'll get those answers to you as soon as we can. Thank you so much for joining us for our Penguin program today. Have a good day.